This video will show you how to determine the base for your coil pot. So during class at some point, you'll receive, you'll pick out actually a template um, to use for your coil pot. Sorry guys, I'm adding this in as an afterthought. It occurred to me as I was watching the video that I forgot to tell you that it's really important that we put our name on our template, especially because so many of these are going to look alike. Um, we might get confused with other people at our tables, and then it's going to throw off um, the symmetry of our coil pot. So when you get your template, you're also going to get a piece of tape, and then on that piece of tape, um, you're going to write your name and class code, stick it onto the template. So I'm just going to stick this on my template, add my name, and then my code. Thanks. And what this template is showing you um, is the side view of your coil pot. Okay, so we're going to use this template to help us build our, essentially we're building a vase out of coils. Um, so before we begin, we want to determine how big we want our coil pot to be, and we want to try to make it something um, that's going to, the, the, where the width of our coil pot um, complements the height of our coil pot. Okay, so um, you'll also be getting a piece of paper um, to do this on. So my piece of paper might look a little bit different than yours, but any piece of paper that's bigger than your template will work. So the first thing that I'm going to do with mine is I'm going to line it up um, at the bottom of my piece of paper. Um, and these templates aren't perfectly squared here, so I'm not so worried about this side of my template. It's really this side that I want to make sure is vertical. Um, so in order to make sure that my walls are vertical, my base needs to be horizontal. Okay, And I know there's a curve to it, but basically what I'm saying is we don't want our coil pot to um, be leaning over. Okay, So we want to make sure it's standing up straight. Okay, so I'm going to start on the left side of my paper, and I want to make sure that when I do this, I'm leaving <clears throat> the space over here open, because what we're going to then do is we're going to flip this over to create um, the other side of our vase. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to trace just this line right here of my coil pot template. So I take that off. So I'm going to do some labeling on mine, and if it helps you to label yours, by all means, please label yours as well. But just to help you see what you're looking at, um, this line here is showing us the edge of our coil pot. So this side right here, this is going to be the inside of my coil pot or my vase. And then out here, get a little bit of clay on there, this will be the outside of my vase. Okay, so inside, outside, and then this is the wall of my vase. Okay, now the wall of my vase, if I'm thinking in terms of clay and of it being three dimensional, I'll never really be able to get my clay as thin as this line. Okay, so as we're rolling coils, the width of a coil is going to be approximately a half an inch thick. So I'm just going to write maybe in the middle here, or I'll do this off to the side. One coil equals a half an inch thick. Okay, so that's going to be important to remember. Okay, all right, so I'm going to do some measuring at this point. So I have my ruler. And I'm going to measure, um, I like to measure on the most inward part um, of, my, of my, my line that I've drawn that's showing the outside edge of my coil pot. So if this is the outside and this is the inside, I'm going to go in a half an inch. So I'm just going to measure from an inward point a half an inch. And I think I'm going to do the same thing down here um, somewhere at the bottom. So I'm making two marks that are at a half an inch. 
Okay, so now this is going to give me the thickness of my walls. So I'm going to go back in with my template. And again, I'm lining the bottom of my template up with the bottom of my piece of paper here. And hopefully it's going to line up with those marks that I've made. Okay, so I want to make sure that I'm keeping this vertical. So again, you see down here my template is um, in line or flush with the bottom of my paper. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trace the edge or contour of my template again. Okay, so now the inside has changed. So this is now become the wall. And this is now the inside of my vase. Okay, so this is giving me just the left half of my coil pot. Now I want to flip my template to determine how wide I want my vase to be. So I'm going to flip this over. Um, one thing I didn't um, make a note of, um, on your template there's going to be an arrow that's pointing in a direction. You always want that arrow to point upward. It's pointing to the top of your vase. Okay, So you want to make sure that you don't have it upside down. If I were to do it this way, um, the form of my vase isn't going to make as much sense. Okay, Alright, so back to here. I'm going to flip this over. And again, I'm lining it up at the bottom. Now, the next line that I draw is going to be the inside of the wall on the right side. So this is going to be my opening. So for my particular um, template that I chose, um, mine kind of is going to flare in and then kind of belly out and then back inward. So this would be the opening, okay, right here. So I want to think about how wide my coil pot is going to be in the opening. Now, I don't want it too skinny, okay? Um, I'd maybe like to be able to put something in my vase. Um, I also don't want to make it too wide. So if I were to come all the way out here, just because I have this big piece of paper, doesn't mean that I'm going to use all of this. So this is going to be too wide. And if you can think about this three-dimensionally, okay, this is going to be a really big coil pot and it won't be able to hold the weight of the clay. Um, there's a good chance that if we tried to make ours this big that the, the walls will cave in on themselves. So I want to find something kind of a happy medium in between. Okay, so again, I'm kind of looking at the opening of my coil pot. And I, that my template isn't very tall, okay, so I don't want to make it too wide or it'll look weird. So I'm thinking mine's going to be about right here. Okay, again, I'm looking at the bottom where my template's lining up with my paper to get it a nice vertical wall and I'm going to go ahead and trace. Okay, So that's going to give me the inside wall. So here we are, still on the inside. The next thing I need to do, I need to determine the thickness of my wall. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to measure. And again, that was a half an inch. So I'm going to go from about right here um, and then go go up at the towards the top about right there okay okay and I'm going to make sure I'm lining my template up again with those marks that I've made and also making sure that the bottom of my template is again lined up with the bottom of my piece of paper. And then I will go ahead and trace. Okay, so this is also giving me the thickness of my wall that was a half an inch and then here we have the outside. Okay. So at this point, we're getting closer to being able to determine um, the base of our of our um, coil pot. And one thing to note at this point also, um, not everyone 
So I'm, I'm not just giving you a circle because not everyone is going to have the same size base. It really is going to depend upon how you're creating um, your walls, okay? All right. So um, the next thing before we, we're going to be cutting these out, but before we cut these out, um, I want us to measure the inside of our coil pot from the top to the bottom every half inch. What this should tell us is approximately how many coils it's going to take you from start to finish to complete um, your coil pot. So I'm going to start off by just kind of closing off the top um, of my coil pot here. So I'm just lining up my ruler and then I'm just going to draw a line going all the way across like this. Okay, so I'm just kind of closing off the top there. And then I'm going to line my ruler up vertically going down the center. And it's okay if it's not an exact measurement. So I'm off a little bit down here, but I'm not going to worry about that because this is just approximate. And as I mark off every half inch, I'm going to count. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen and a half or so. Okay, so this is going to take me sixteen coils approximately to build from top to bottom, okay? Now, um, if we're able to attach, let's say, four coils per class period, essentially, to can just to construct and not clean anything up, it should take me approximately four class periods to build my vase. So we wanna keep that in mind as we're working in class, um, how many class periods it's going to take us. Now, if I had um, a taller template, and let's say it was 24 coils, then I would know that I would probably need to attach more than four in a class period um, or spend some a little bit of extra time because it's going to take me longer. Okay. All right. So um, once we've determined how many coils we have our vase looking the way we want it to, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut out our vase. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and take a minute to cut out. Make sure when you're cutting that you're cutting on the correct shape. Okay, I'm sorry, on the correct line. So we always are cutting on the outside line, okay? Outside line, very important. Okay, so here I have my vase and I have some scrap. I am going to keep my scrap and hopefully there'll be enough of it for me to make my base. Okay, so I'm going to keep this close by, but I'm going to put it off to the side for just a minute. Um, I'm also going to hold on to my template. I'm sorry, to my... Um, to my, my plan here that I've created um, and occasionally I might go back and reference it or hold it up to my coil pot as I'm building it to make sure that everything's going the way it needs to go um, according to my plan. All right, so the next step is to um, determine the base. Okay, so this line right here, if we're thinking in terms of a circle, okay, so this is flat right now, but as we construct these, they're going to be three-dimensional. So the base or the bottom is going to be a circle. So this line right here would be the diameter of your circle, okay? Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. In order to use a compass, we need to find the radius of the, of the, um, of the diameter, okay? So half of it. So one thing you could do is you could fold your piece of paper in half 
or you can measure. For me, I think it's going to be easiest just to fold this in half. So I'm going to just carefully fold my piece of paper in half. It's okay if it's not perfect, but you want to try to get it as close as you're able and go ahead and give it a good crease. Okay. So now that I just have half of my plan here, this is where I'm going to figure out my radius for my compass. Okay, so I have a compass here and I'm going to adjust the compass. I want I like to make sure that the compass, the point, the needle, and the pencil are in line with each other. Um, depending on which compass you're using, um, there's a, um, usually an adjustment here for you to adjust the pencil. If you do, if you need to, sh if the pencil needs to be sharpened, um, bring it to me and I can help you. Just gonna adjust this. And then I want to make sure that the point of my pencil and the needle of the compass are on either side of my base. Okay, so this is my base down here. So I'm lining up. Okay, so that they are as close as I can get them. Okay, so this is going to give me half of the diameter or the radius of my circle. I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to get my scrap piece of paper back. And I'm going to find a good spot. Maybe I'll flip this over. I have kind of a bigger area here. Um, I want to make sure before I do anything that it's going to fit. All right, so the pointed part of the compass goes down into the table. And then I'm going to carefully start drawing my circle. And there's my base, okay? So now I'm just going to, I'm gonna label this so I remember. And I'm going to cut it out. Um, when I'm cut, just a tip on cutting, um, when, whenever you're cutting something smaller than like this big piece of paper and circular, get rid of some of this extra. So I like to actually trim pretty close to my circle before I actually start cutting it. And it makes it so much easier to hold on to the paper also. So um, whenever I'm cutting a circle, I hold the paper in my hand and you're gonna notice that my scissors don't move much. I'm actually turning the paper as I cut. Okay, so um, I now have my base template. Um, so this is going to be where we're gonna start. Just put template. This is where we're gonna start our coil pot. So once you have your base template, you're ready to get some clay, set up your clay for the slab roller, and roll out your slab for a rough cut. So I'm gonna stop here, and I'll pick back up um, for the next step of the project. Okay, so I'm all set up um, in the classroom. I have my base template and some clay. I'm getting ready at this point to um, prepare my clay for the slab roller. So just a couple quick reminders before we um, take our clay to the slab roller. Um, the first thing is that we wanna always make sure that our piece of clay that we have is wider than the template. So if you can see right here, my template comes just about to the edge of my piece of clay, but I want my piece of clay to be wider than the diameter of my base, okay? So I'm gonna make it a little bit wider. And again, just a reminder, it does not have to be um, taller than the base, it needs to be wider. So we don't wanna flatten our clay too much or um, the slab roller won't be able to do its job. So I'm gonna remove uh, my template. I'm going to keep it close by and I'm going to flatten out my clay a little bit to make it wider. Okay, um, I like to flip it over and do the same thing on the back. 
Okay. All right, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my template back and place it on top of my clay. And hopefully you can see here that now my piece of clay is wider than my template. It's not longer yet because remember the slab roller is going to stretch the piece of clay and going in this direction. Okay. So um, before this go can go to the slab roller, a couple more things to prepare it. Um, first of all, remember we want to have more of a squared shape to go through the slab roller. So this way um, we don't get a really long oval shape. So I'm going to just tamp my, my piece of clay on my board or on the table to square it off. After I do that, I wanna make sure it's still wider than the template, so I check that occasionally. I also wanna look at the surface of my piece of clay and if there's any creases or wrinkles, I wanna blend those in because any crack or crease in the clay will stretch as it goes through the slab roller. So we wanna prevent that from happening. All right. Um, so we're still bigger than the template, that's good. Now, um, when this piece of clay goes through the slab roller, the wide side goes towards the slab roller. So when we make our ramp, we wanna make our ramp on the wide side of our piece of clay. So again, I'm just kind of pushing down, making a slight ramp um, in my clay. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take my clay to the slab roller. I'll roll out my, um, my slab and then I'll come back and show you what we'll do next. Okay, so I've taken the time to roll out my slab, as you can see here. Okay, so my slab was rolled out. I'm not going to smooth anything out yet. Just a reminder that the first day of rolling a slab, we want our clay to rest um, before we smooth, before we compress, before we cut to template. So what I am going to do though, I'm going to do a rough cut on my base. So I have my base template here. I'm going to place it on top of my slab and using my pin tool, I'm going to cut around um, my base. Now, um, the fettling knife will work for this, but it's much easier to use a pin tool to cut a circle. Okay, so that's why I'm using my pin tool. So I'm gonna hold my template down and I'm just gonna carefully remove some of the clay, leaving about a fourth to a half of an inch around the outside of my template. Away this clay here this clay can be recycled and then at this point one other thing I forgot to mention um, on your template I don't have a pencil but um, you're gonna want to put your name on your template as well um, eventually when we cut these to the template this piece of paper is going to stay on the bottom and will help us to identify whose project is whose so either write your name using a pencil or a sharpie um, please don't use a water soluble pen or marker or you'll just lose your name it'll bleed into the clay okay so at this point i'm ready to store my slab to get it ready for next class for building so i will wrap this in just a little bit of dry paper towel and i'll put it into my plastic bag and when we wrap these in dry paper towel we don't want to wrap them a bunch of times we really just want the top and the bottom to be covered with the with the paper towel so I'll show you real quick place my slab on the paper towel bring the other side over like this and then i like to smooth um, that down just a little bit okay and then this can go in my bag if you have a lot of extra paper towel like i do here um, you could just rip that off or if you have scissors cut it off but if we have too much paper towel the slab's going to get too dry 
And next class, we wanna start adding coils. So we want it to stiffen up a bit, but we don't want it to be too dry. So at this point, I will then put this in my bag, seal it up, let it sit, and then we'll come back um, for the next demonstration where it will show you how to build your coil pot.